uh, use of PATH, albeit aside from through an ordinary survey and press point, critically undermined the 2001 census. Very, very embarrassing for ONS. A £250 million operation which was left in some doubt because the data simply wasn't good enough. It was data data, there were other mistakes. Uh, we had to make sure that, that wouldn't happen uh, for 2011. We were involved in a consortium with Lockheed Martin who produced National Press Register in 2011. And we found that whilst PATH was very good, when we were working hands-on with PATH, I don't know what our class is world class, but it certainly wasn't world class. And there are certain statistics about PATH. Uh, for example, only 60% of the buildings on all the survey maps have a PATH address. Uh, uh, and PATH delivery points are something that determine all the time on our well selves. The other case of the state quo we heard this morning is that the cost recovery model for PATH delivers a reasonable cost. And that is actually another term in the legislation. It says that PATH must be made available on reasonable terms. We heard Tim speaking this morning from the PATH Advisory Board, and the PATH Advisory Board and PATH Advisory Board consultants all seem to believe that £27 million a year are reasonable terms. I'm not sure, but we in OJA do believe that. Uh, the issue that comes from the Treasury and elsewhere when we've had to make our business case is that all the money that's been paid for PATH at the moment and for PATH licenses is real cash coming through and flowing through roll mail as a part of measurable taxable economic activity. Whereas everything that we say about it as an open data product is entirely conjectural and is almost certainly not measurable. So we're asked, how would you replace that £27 million? Pounds? That £27 million pounds is real revenue. Uh, and uh, likewise, OS and Geoplace, a commercial activity, generate returns to the Exchequer. Well, we believe uh, that there is a very strong case for change to open data. We've labelled labor this point about being in core reference data. All society depends on addresses. I found it quite horrific when the £500 million project, Fire Control, led to wrangles as to whether PATH or NLPG or Ordnance Survey or local government data was going to be used. They were spending £500 million in order to make sure that they wouldn't get burnt alive. But yet a large part of the discussion was about the licensing terms and the cost of the underlying core uh, reference data. Uh, we believe the best way to deliver is to deliver a single definitive national address data set. Hasn't been done before, certainly was done for the census. We could create a single definitive national address data set of dwellings, but only dwellings. There are lots of other geographical objects, some of which are postal delivery objects, some of which are objects without a postal address, and we feel they ought to be in a single national address data set. By some amazing bit of Alice in Wonderland, words mean exactly what we want them to mean. We're told that PATH with NAD built on top of it is that single definitive national address data set. Uh, we're told that two actually are one. Well, that's an act of philosophical faith that I find impossible to accept and very difficult to understand, particularly given uh, the way in which Royal Mail behaves secretively in relation to PATH and in relation to products that they want to build or wanted to build around PATH. Remove complex licensing regimes, restricted and costly to manage the license and licensees. These are the comments that even the PATH Advisory Board agrees with us. Uh, if you want to come across one of the most bizarre websites in the country, look at the PATH Compliance Centre uh, on uh, the web, which will tell you exactly where you can't use PATH, or if you do use PATH, how much you're going to have to pay. The licensing around PATH is absolutely outrageous. I also find it somewhat concerning that that licensing regime was designed by a head of the address management unit, the company that supplies uh, that website, happens to be owned by that same ex-head of the address Unit. There's something a little bit cosy there in terms of the advantages of making the licensing complex. Uh, there is duplication. Uh, we're told that the most expensive element of PATH is the postman going out and confirming the addresses. 
Well, 250,000 new Google notifications per year are coming from local government. Most of the notifications we've heard this morning come from other sources other than long mail. Yet we're being told that the posties checking the postal addresses every day, and then they say, well, it's not every day, it's once a year, and being paid for it is the only efficient way of doing it. It's almost as ludicrous as the local authorities at one stage telling us they knew where all the addresses were because their bin men went out to every address in their local authorities. Uh, I don't think the bin men were being paid for confirming uh, addresses. So there is massive duplication. And not only duplication, confusion in what the correct change information is. We believe that the cost of production and supply for an open data set could be massively reduced. Because firstly, all the, the data use prevention costs would go. All the licensing would go, a lot of marketing would go, a lot of the legal protection of the data would go and would no longer be necessary. And again, we can't be told that it's commercial confidential what all those bring in. Everywhere else we found, open data delivers improved data quality. Okay, a, we might have all sorts of views about OpenStreetMap, but one of the most remarkable things about OpenStreetMap is the way that quality approaches the quality of national mapping agencies in developed countries, and in developing countries, massively exceeds anything that can be done. And that's a global data set that is maintained by volunteers on a totally open platform, which costs a few hundred thousand pounds, and a few tens of thousands of pounds to maintain, in real time. Yet we're told that PATH, 28 million rows of about 30 columns, is an incredibly complex data set. It isn't. Uh, so we think data quality improve. Uh, open data underpins innovation and significant economic value. And again, going back to the street map model, a massive number of SMEs all around the world are building apps around open street map. Lots of charities like uh, the Open Cycle Streets uh, group are building products for local authorities using OpenStreetMap because it's available without license. Because of the problems we have with public rights of way, OpenStreetMap has increasingly being used by public rights of way officers in order to produce their own websites of where their public rights of way are within their own areas because the licensing of doing that uh, by using definitive data is uh, excessive. Uh, so. Royal Mail's licensing regime is complex. Data collection costs are almost certainly not over-recovered. Uh, another little question I asked about PATH, £27 million pounds a year is the revenue for PATH. It costs all the survey £104 million pounds a year to run their entire national mapping operation. Over a 1,000 staff, probably over 100 products. A master map database with 450 million genuinely complex objects in it, not just rows of uh, 30 items of data, and something that changes much more rapidly <coughs> than PATH. So uh, I think the data collection costs are massively over-recovered by Royal Mail, and I think the complexity of the data collection <coughs> behind the local secrecy is massively overstated. Royal Mail also pays too little percent for operating data. One of the things that everyone has agreed about PATH is that Royal Mail cannot run their current operation without PATH. They might be able to adapt to running without PATH, but at the moment they can't. Actually, they can't comply with their own regulation regime without PATH, because if you look at the Ofcom's latest regulation regime for Royal Mail, a lot of it is predicated on analysis based on postcodes. So Ofcom couldn't regulate Royal Mail uh, without PATH. Royal Mail pays a ceiling price for any large operator of £250,000 a year for all of that advantage. And that means that they're getting the bargain of the century. All other prices, I've already said, are stacked on top of, cost, of the costly path, path license. And the Ofcom consultation, by our reckoning, something like 25 out of the 28 uh, public responses call either for open data or significant change in licensing and pricing uh, for PATH. We need to go through that in more detail, so I wouldn't uh, really stick by those figures, but certainly uh, I only saw about three or four responses that uh, wanted to maintain the status quo. Okay. Uh, OS Open Data has been a really good thing. Public sector mapping agreement licensing public sector bodies is incredibly helpful. What's interesting about public sector mapping agreement licensing, it shows that the National Mapping Agency is prepared to deliver data on a fee-for-service basis rather than on a data item by data item basis. Well, that's a very interesting uh, principle we've established. We ought to be able to stick to it. Commercial restrictions are limiting to data products and service markets and costly of SMEs uh, and derive data restrictions from all sorts of issues. So we feel that we should recognise addressing as a public good and as cross reference data and we should use it in that way. And we should move the bar and add address space to open data 
for general use, find a way of recompensing OS and gear place for doing that, and use some of the excellent mechanisms that were designed or described this morning for collaborative data maintenance. Uh, I was very impressed by the Northern Ireland situation because unlike uh, other parts of the UK, there genuinely a single national address data set, national would be Northern Ireland, is being maintained on a single platform. It would be nice if it was an open platform, it is an open platform, but at least it shows what advantages can be gained from that. I'd like to finish off really bear in mind that the AGI mission is to maximise the use of geographical information for the benefit of the citizen, good governance, and commerce. We do not believe that the current regime and certainly the current path restrictions maximise the use of addressing uh, data in the UK. And there are many examples and a lot of evidence to demonstrate that. I'm running out of time. Minutes are going open. Heather has gone through most of these. Uh, I won't even bother reading them out, you've got them there in your slide set. So where are we going now? In a matter of weeks or a matter of months, a political decision will be taken on path. It is now almost certainly a purely political decision. I think all the evidence that is going to go in has pretty well gone in. There's still some evidence to come within bids, but that's going to be really important. And there's work on feasibility of the National Interest Database, which you'll hear about in a moment. Uh, we're continuing with uh, benefits requests. And it's interesting that a lot of the data sets we're asked for are actually subsets of National Address Gazetteer. <coughs> subsets, for example, give us the addresses of all schools, give us the addresses of all doctors' surgeries. And unless we have open addressing, we can't deliver those data sets as open data. So I think that whoops, so I think that 20 or 30 years of trading address data and associated quarters has failed to maximise use. We've had at least four major address wars uh, over address related IPR, and I think that that is what the current uh, tussle over PAP is about. Business as usual simply mean more of the same. To ignore history and carry on doing the same, to, to expect a different result is simply insane. We shouldn't be doing that. And I think the time to benefit from open national address data sets is now. We hope that politicians are out there listening. We think they are. That's it. Thank you very much indeed.